It's been called the most significant scientific breakthrough of the century. Today's announcement shatters that perception of a static universe through the direct observation of gigantic gravitational waves washing across our Milky Way galaxy. The work of the world's brightest minds in astrophysics. That could give us a map to the history of the universe. This is a really big deal. It's opening the door into an entirely new kind of way of looking at the universe. About every 50 years, a massive star in our galaxy blows apart. The gigantic explosion, known as a supernova, burns as bright as 10 billion suns. Albert Einstein predicted that heavy objects and violent events in space create ripples in the universe. Waves of gravity that travel for millions of years. But he could not prove it until now. For the first time ever, a global team of scientists have detected a background of gravitational waves throughout our universe from the beginning of time. Over the last 15 years, we, the Nanograv Collaboration, have been on an audacious mission to find the low pitch hum of gravitational waves coming from all over the universe, washing through our galaxy to stretch and squeeze space time between the stars. In June 2023, Nanograv, or the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves, and the International Pulsar Timing Array Consortium, or IPTA, using data from several radio telescopes, made this groundbreaking discovery. We harnessed a collection of astronomical objects in our neighborhood of the Milky Way to act as one big gravitational wave antenna. Nanograv is this extremely mind-blowing project in which you use the universe as your platform to detect gravitational waves. Gravitational waves are ripples in space-time that come about when objects, massive objects, accelerate. They tell you things about the nature of the universe that you can't get from any other source. Imagine this space-time as a fabric stretching out throughout space. Any object with sufficient mass will instantly change the shape of that fabric. This warping of space and time is what we experience as gravity. Until now, virtually everything we know about the universe has come from either optical or radio telescopes. But unlike light or radio waves, these gravitational waves can pass straight through matter unchanged. Gravitational wave detectors are a new kind of telescope. So they allow us to be able to use gravitational waves as a messenger. Gravitational waves are remarkably hardy, a kind of cosmic DNA. They carry exact portraits of their origins. Although they're very faint and invisible, they emit a continuous low frequency signal. And these signals cannot be detected by ground-based telescopes. Scientists needed a giant space antenna, the size of the entire galaxy. So they found a way to use pulsars in the Milky Way galaxy as detectors. Pulsars, powerful remnants of exploding stars, spin rapidly, sweeping beams of radio waves through space. While these pulsars are extraordinary objects in their own right, to us, they are the components of our vast galaxy-wide gravitational wave antenna. When seen from Earth, they appear as steady pulses, making them very useful cosmic clocks. The way nanograph detects gravitational waves is by monitoring pulsars across the sky. The technique they use is called pulsar timing, so pulsars are very precise clocks. Gravitational waves can interrupt this pulse causing an irregularity or anomaly in the pulse. Now, when gravitational waves cascade through the galaxy, they warp space-time between the pulsars, 
causing the ticking of these cosmic clocks to change in a predictable and correlated way among the numerous pulsars that we monitor. Individually, the origin of these pulsar signals were faint. But compiling 15 years of data from hundreds of scientists made it possible to prove the existence of low-frequency gravitational waves passing through our galaxy. What they are looking for is that how does the time delay coming from one pulsar at one part of the sky correlate with the delay coming from a different part of the sky. And uh, Nanograv discovered that from their 15 years uh, data. Nanograv has detected potentially signatures, gravitational signatures consistent with the merging of these biggest black holes that we know to exist that anchor galaxies. Yet, this breakthrough is not the first time we've detected gravitational waves. In 2015, at the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, or LIGO, scientists detected faint disturbances from space. In 2015, we had the first discovery of gravitational waves. Ladies and gentlemen, we have detected gravitational waves. We did it. What they detected was the equivalent of a motorboat's wake created in time and space by the collision of two gravitational monsters, two black holes totaling more than 60 times the mass of our sun. So powerful, even light could not escape their pull. By the way, that wave was created 1.3 billion years ago. The first time I heard about LIGO, my reaction is, this is crazy, it will never work. It cost more than a billion dollars to build and operate the dual detectors, located 2,000 miles apart, one in Washington state, the other in Louisiana. These two ears on the Earth allow scientists to triangulate the location of massive cosmic events. In 2015, we show that gravitational waves, yeah, they are real, and not only they are real, but they are going to be a new tool to understand the world around us. The goal with these detectors is to map the gravitational wave universe to create a history of the cosmos. LIGO works by shooting a laser beam, which is split down intersecting vacuum tubes, each over two miles long. LIGO uses a laser interferometer to directly measure gravitational waves. We pick up gravitational waves from the interference pattern of the laser. So this is the, actually the vertex. This is the heart of the interferometer here. This is where the two arms join. There's a test mass in there, and directly behind that is what we call a beam splitter. And that's where the laser is split into two arms and travels to the end stations, bounces off the mirrors, and comes back. The lasers act like a ruler for the arms, precisely measuring the distance between the two mirrors. What's really going on there is literally space is stretching and space is compressing. The distance between the beam splitter and the end mirror of the interferometer is actually changing all right, as, as this gravitational wave passes. With LIGO, we're using laser beams to measure the distance between mirrors with incredible precision. We've basically built the world's best ruler ever. Well, these different colors all represent different frequencies that our ground is moving at here in the lab. We can actually use that information to correct for how our mirrors are moving. The observatories have an absurd level of precision. It's like uh, measuring the distance between here and the nearest star at the precision of a human hair. Nanograv and LIGO detect gravitational waves at opposite ends of the spectrum. These uh, sources that Nanograv detects, it's the more higher mass, so supermassive black holes. That kind of signal LIGO cannot pick up because it's in an entirely different frequency range. Nanograv allows that kind of detection. We're detecting these kind of smaller star-like black holes, these lighter ones. So we're kind of probing the two ends of the black hole spectrum. While LIGO can hear a single traumatic event from light years ago, like the crash of a symbol, Nanograv can detect a background of waves, more like an orchestra emitted by supermassive black holes 
from an entire gravitational universe. When two black holes swirl around each other, they generate a steady stream of high-frequency gravitational waves. This is what LIGO can detect. The things that we see pretty often actually are kind of the collisions and mergers of binary black hole systems. That's two black holes that get caught in each other's gravity and then inspiral until they're a final object. In its first five years, LIGO has registered several major events. In 2015, we had the first discovery of gravitational waves. In 2017, we discovered the first binary neutron star discovery. In 2020, we discovered the first ever neutron star black hole merger. The momentum of discovery suggests the massive release of energy may be relatively common across the universe. Nanograv's discovery of a gravitational wave background confirms it. These observations reveal a rolling, noisy universe alive with the cosmic symphony of gravitational waves. So we are actually constantly uh, discovering gravitational waves. We get to see the waveform of a merger. This tells us interesting things about the physics of the black holes. It lets us test all of our theories, all of our ideas about how they form, about how they behave, and how our current theories might be, be lacking. In any given galaxy, one of these events might only happen once every million years. But we're now able to monitor about 10 million galaxies at a time. It's a new type of astronomy. The more these detection alarms go off, and the quicker they alert other telescopes, the clearer the history of our universe becomes. Ground-based radio telescopes detect radio signals given off by cosmic events. Radio telescopes look at very long wavelengths of light and convert these waves into pictures. It increases our confidence in detection, both from the gravitational wave data and, say, the electromagnetic data. Uh, it's much more rich in comparison to just the gravitational wave data alone. The frequency, the wavelength, and the time period all help to paint a picture of a cataclysmic event that helped to map the history of our universe. Because of LIGO, uh, what we will be able to tell astronomers is that when we detect a uh, gravitational wave from, say, a pair of merging neutron stars, we could alert them ahead of time to point their telescopes and monitor a part of sky for an explosion. If the telescopes can locate the cosmic event, they can provide a visual snapshot of the source of the gravitational waves, known as a gravitational wave counterpart. This is exactly what happened in 2017. In 2017, we discovered the first binary neutron star discovery. This was the first time unifying detectors could detect both gravitational waves and optical radio waves. And that was very big news because, uh, you know, the merger of two neutron stars, the explosion that was seen by observatories all around the world. Collaboration is, uh, is essential. The richness of the physics that you can do with gravitational waves is really enhanced by the number of detectors that they do detect gravitational waves at the same time. So LIGO is part of the LIGO-Virgo-CAGRA collaboration a large group of people spread all over the world. The observatories are constantly listening for our alerts. There are a lot of telescope teams which are looking out for uh, gravitational wave counterparts. LIGO continues to be updated, allowing breakthrough technology, like frequency squeezing, to filter out noise to obtain a clearer signal. For people like me who work on instrumentation, what you care about is to make your detectors as sensitive as possible, and that means to reduce the noise as much as possible. That means we can see farther away in the universe. 
We developed a new technology that has been installed in the LIGO detectors, and we call it frequency-dependent squeezing. And what squeeze states are, they essentially reduce our measurement noise at the cost of increasing some complementary noise. If we decrease the detector noise by a factor of two, the volume of the universe we can probe increases by a factor of eight, that's two cubed. And the farther we can push the observable horizon of our detectors, um, the farther back in time we'll be able to see how black holes formed and what their life cycles are. LIGO and NanoGraph are the first generation of gravitational wave astronomy. When Einstein proposed his theory of general relativity, uh, gravitational waves were a manifestation of that theory. But he calculated them to be too weak and did not think that these would ever be detected. 100 years down the line, because of technology uh, and instrumentation, uh, we can do such precise measurements that we are able to pick those up. Eventually, detectors will be built in space. We'd be able to learn more about dark matters, about primordial black holes, to try to solve some of the biggest mysteries in our universe. Instruments of near-perfect precision, free of interference, exploring the dawn of time. One of the ways that gravitational waves could really revolutionize our understanding of the universe is if we could see gravitational waves from the Big Bang. It's going to allow us to peer back to the beginning of the birth of the universe in a way that no other kind of astronomy can. Gravitational waves can go right back to the beginning of time, so we could see the birth of the universe. For all of human history, um, people have been looking at the stars and trying to understand our place within the universe. But the detection of gravitational waves was a completely new window now that's opened into our universe.